right, ladies and gents, hot on its heels from its Agritechnica preview, we should say, because is she officially launched yet? No, this new CR11. No, we're still previewing. You're still we're, previewing we're, yet. Hence the fence. Hence the fence. So hence. we're stuck in the fence. We, we, yep. we are with the combine specialist, Mr. Nigel Honeyman. As mentioned, we had a good look at this combine at Agritechnica. I'm now going to see if I can get a few more figures out of Nigel. I suspect not, but it's in the UK and we can't ignore it. We could not walk past it without another look at it. Yep. So here we are at Nigel. So give us a lap of the combine. What can lap you tell us in five minutes? What can we tell? Five minutes. Right. What we're trying to do with this combine is maximum output. Yeah. So we've stretched everything that we can, but we're constrained. Yeah. We can't go wider than three and a half meters. We can't go taller than four. So all the magic has to happen within that You've space. got to get it in that box. In that box. Right. So what we've done is we've done a few things that are a little bit smart. What we've done is we've looked at the way that the drives run around this machine. When we look at efficiency, yeah. drives have to be key. So what we've done with this machine is we've taken the drive for our dynamic feed roll at the front of the rotors. And what we've done is we've put it down the left-hand rotor. Right, so, so the rotor is, is the, the drive shaft. Right, is the drive so, shaft. So what we've done is we, by, by doing that, we can maximise the width of the chassis without having to put belts and yeah. power assemblies. Or another shaft down the side on the, of it, on, yeah. the, on the outside. So by doing that, we can keep the width. And the other advantage we get is we synchronise the speed of that DFR to the speed of the rotor. Exactly. So by doing it that way, we can always maximise the way that we get the transition yeah. from the feed roll into the rotor itself. Right. Regardless of the speed, regardless whether we're doing big grain, small grain, whatever speed the rotor's going, the DFR is, is sped up to match. Right. So per perfect, perfect from that size. No figures yet. No figures yet. We're gonna, I'm going to get our figure out of this guy. If, well, I'll tell you what, give me some figures that you may be able to reveal. Power. 775 horsepower. FPT engine? FPT, FPT cursor 16. So we've got a big 16 litre in the back of this. Yes, we have. Lots of GGs. Lots of GGs. Any boost on that for unloading, chopping? Nope. No, nope. you Seven, just got. 775 flat. All the time. All the time. Cool, right. Tank capacity? 20,000 litres, so three quarters of a, a, a kilo, so you're looking roughly at 15 tonnes of wheat in the tank. Right. Good stuff. So right. plenty up top. Plenty, right. up, plenty so up top. So we're getting some figures. We're getting, we're, I'll give some you, big figures. I'll give you another big figure. Go on, hit me with it. 210 litres a second. Unloading. Com coming out, out of the tank. So what that means Don't is, miss. What that means is don't, don't miss. miss. Don't miss. <laughs> Do not miss with the trailer. <laughs> That's or, a big clean up. Or put a shovel on the trailer just so that you can keep 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 tidy. I think you'll have a loading shovel following you around. I don't well, think that's going to cut it. Well, anyway. well, we might have, might have one of those as well. Right. Sieve area, threshing area, cleaning area. No, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, come we, on. We, Sufficient. 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 Right. Sufficient. Right. Um, what we, what we, I mean, the cleaning shoe is, is pretty unique, what we've done. We've actually put two cleaning shoes in this machine. Right. Hence the twin clean. This is the first machine where, on the, on the, on the, on the CR family, we've dispensed with the, um, with the self-leveling shoe that we've used since the mid-80s with, with TF. Right. So what we've done here, and if I open this up, mind your head. Mind your head. Going up. So. You'll notice here when we started talking about the efficiency of the drive lines, yeah, yeah. we're absolutely straight into the machine. That's it, because with the twin rotors, you've not left, there's not a lot of space left this side. No, like say you no. maximize the width. Yep. And then to the track, yes. there's not much more space, is no, it? No, but what we've done, because we started with a white sheet of paper when we designed this machine, yeah. we, we, it was designed from the outset as to be compatible with tracks. Right. The existing CR started life as a wheeled combine That's right, and it was yeah. adapted to tracks. Yeah. So what we've been able to do here with the maximum width on the chassis, we've maximized the width on the belt. Yeah. So this belt's a 26 inch belt, Right. figure coming, 3.48 meters wide. Yeah. So what we do with a 24 inch belt on the current 1090, we can do with a wider belt on this machine. Right. Do we need the wider belt? We're only 3% heavier with this machine than we are with the 1090. And how much more output? Between yeah, this is this is this is this is, <laughs> Come on. This, this is the airy fairy right? between twenty and forty percent. Right, Extra. and you were already the world the, record, the world record that, which is we must mention nigh, nigh on a hundred tons, hundred ton an hour. Yeah, and you're, you could be you could be twenty percent more than that. We could be forty percent. more You than could that. be forty percent more than that. It's no one who's had. Are we going to find out in summer? <laughs> Are we going to get on this and let's have a find in, out in the summer when we let you on it? You, yeah. can, you can you can find out. We're going to find out a let, few figures. Let, let, let us stretch your legs. Right, there we go. But. Put it this way, you need a trailer for it. 
it will, yeah. it will it will keep you going that's for yeah. sure yeah ideally you want to chase you keeping up with this don't you um yeah may, maybe more than one right okay fair enough it will it will what we've seen with it at the minute is that it will stretch most people's logistic systems. Right, so while we've got her opened up here, we can clearly see the left-hand rotor there. Like I say, that is powering that, the that feeder is, rotor at the front there. Yep. That, I assume that's longer, bigger diameter, is it? Bigger diameter, 24 inches longer as right. well. Right. So what we want to try and do with this machine is get as close as we can to zero losses. Right. And we've bloody nearly done it. It yeah. really is close to zero. Uh, and when you look at zero losses, you've got to look at separation losses off the rotor, and you've also got to look at cleaning shoe losses, which is where we've done all the modifications with the cleaning shoe. Yeah. We are pretty close to be being there. As I said, we've done away with the self-leveling shoe, but what we've got now is we've got a, what we call closed loop logic right. applied to a side shaking system. Yeah. So what the combine would, th there's more than a uh, gradient yeah. to cause distribution problems on a cleaning shoe. Yeah. You can have uneven feeding in the front. You can have uh, uneven feeding coming off a return system or something similar to that. So what we do is we use pressure sensors, two sets of them, one at the, near the end yeah. of the brain. Hang on, hang on. Grab a brew. Just grab a brew, everybody. Grab a brew. Relax. We're going to go for it's this. It's not going to be five minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 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 what we, so what we, there's two, you can't do this combine. This combine took 10 years to develop. We can't, I can't tell you We're not doing it, it in five, in five minutes. minutes now. That's for sure. But what, we, what we've seen in testing yeah. is that the grain pan at the front, to even up poor, poor feeding and yeah. feeding, will shake to the left. Right. But because of a gradient at the back, the, the combine sees it, and it will then shake to the right. So the front can be going left, the back yeah. can be going right. But what it's doing... So it's literally a split. It, yeah, but right. what, it, what it's doing is it's making sure that the distribution across the grain pan is even at all times. Right. This cross distribution. Why? Because that's where we get the capacity from. It. Yeah. That is, where, that is where we get it. We couldn't do that with a, with a combine. The old CR, the, the, the self-leveling sieve was great. You tilt the combine over 10 degrees that way, and you tilt the sieve over 10 degrees yeah. that way. But it didn't... It assumed that it was already level on There's the ground. Too many other factors, like There's you say. too many other right. factors involved. So and speaking of the old, you know, the C I say old, it's still current. The CR10. Current. Yeah. What percentage of, I suppose you could say, build construction design is in this of that, about, or is this about five percent? About five percent. Ninety-five percent of the parts on this brand machine spanker. are either brand spanking new or they've been re-engineered re for it. Right. So there's very, very little carryover with it. And the 11, uh, is that denoting the uh, class of the combine? Yes, I mean, the, the American class system is one I'm not a great fan of in Europe. No. We, don't, we don't tend to use it, but that's really what it, what it was designed. Right. So it's a step beyond where we are with the right. 1090. Cool. Right, sliding back then, come on. Sliding what we, back, what come we got on. going around here? What Residue we... management, all that jazz. All that jazz, right. Completely new again. Surprise, surprise at the back of the machine. <laughs> so what we've done, um, we've, we, we've lost a couple of things at the back of the machine. We've lost the belt that used to feed out the belt going into the chopper or out the back. Right. There used to be a straw discharge belt. That's gone. The chaff spreader has gone. Right. That's, that saves weight. Yeah. But it also saves power. I'm going to say power losses through so, all that. Yeah. So any power that we save there, we can actually put into output on the machine right. itself. So you're doing it all through the distribution here. Yeah. So we've got a distributor here. So we've got twin disc. Twin disc. Yeah. Uh, variable speed, and also with a mechanical. Uh, bar that wobbles up and down to be able to spread to the side. Bit of a deflector plate, a is deflector it? A deflector plate right? coming, through, coming, coming through there. But this is actually monitored, again, closed loop logic. It's monitored by these little white panels down the bottom here. Now, these are radar. Right. The reason we use radar rather than infrared or anything like that is the dust. You can see through dust. We can right. see through the dust. So what that will do, that will measure the, the spreading width. It knows we've got a 15 metre header on the front. It tries to keep it at 7.5 metres to the side. Um, and if it can't, because of wind or slope mm. or anything like that, it can then see that with no intervention from the operator, make the adjustment It can itself. start compensating for yeah. that. Right. To be able to do it. Clever stuff, eh? Clever, clever stuff. The, right. other, the other thing we do here is that we've moved the chopper up. Uh, so this is what we refer to as a high mount chopper. Yeah. So this is now, it's got a gearbox on the top. We can change the speed of the chopper. So if we're just swathing out the back, we'd run this in the slow speed. Tickle four, it out. Tickle it out the back. Yeah. And then from the cab, or you, you can do it from this panel here, but it's designed to be all done from the cab. We can go from chop to drop. It, we can change the gear of the, uh, of, of, of the chopper at the back, all from the luxury, quiet, 
cleanliness of the cab. <laughs> so we can all we can all keep it run from there. And this whole unit, if you need access to it, the whole unit swings up. The whole out. unit, all the this whole will unit, swing out. Swings right. up the back. Come on then, Nigel. Let's, right, let's, let's, keep, let's going. keep it going. Let's keep it going. So um, go on down this side. Then. Come on down the side. Pop this one. Pop this one. Let's have a look. So what we got under here? Mind your head. Heads up. So we have got rather a large. <laughs> um, Is it? <laughs> Well, we could, we, could probably, we could probably actually get you up there, yeah. for, for, for sure. Um, but the clever thing about this is where we've got the two cleaning shoes, so we've got a front shoe, front shoe and a back shoe, yeah. we've actually got two cross augers coming across into the machine. Right. Um, we have to be a little bit careful about it. We've obviously got the fan at the front, so we, 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 uh, the way that the uh, cross auger rotates keeps the material away from the fan uh, and gets it up into this, into this unit here. One thing on this that is optional, but we're getting a lot of um, chatter about it at the moment, is this NIR sensor near, right. near infrared at the back. So, so we, similar to what you got in your forage, is it? Something identical. Like, identical system. Identical. So that, that box uh, can actually swap between the combine, the forager, it can go onto a slurry tanker, go onto a slurry tank, right. so that you can measure nitrogen. All you do is you change what we call the curves, yeah. so the reflected light, Right. Uh, and then it can read read what. So it, like a calibration thing. Like a yeah, calibration. Right. Thing. Uh, for a combine, primarily we're looking at protein. Yeah. So protein for wheat, so will give us the give us the milling, uh, and we can also deduce the nitrogen content from there as well. Right. So you could do effectively. You got two good things with that. You could dive into a field, see what the quality is like. If it's not good enough, back out. Or yep. if some of it's good quality, right, that grain needs to go to the mill yep. now or wherever. Get the higher price. Or if it's poor quality, chuck that in the shed. Keep that for a later date. Or for feed or, stock or for blending or for blending yeah exactly. if, you've got, if you've got something that's very high quality and something that's medium quality you can get them both over the line for milling that's it and then the other uh feature as well obviously it's all your yield map and things like that yes. you can work out what yep. to do with your so drilling that, rates afterwards that, and that will go onto a layer in a yield map so that yeah. you can see exactly what is what's what's happened in the field right so that that has been the missing piece for a long long time there you go it's one thing knowing how much you're getting out of a field yeah. it's one it's another thing altogether knowing the quality exactly of what you're getting yeah. out of the field and I believe you got another thing on this, or lack of another thing, uh, returns auger on this. Have you moved it, shifted it about a bit? Or? No, no, there's still a returns auger underneath, yeah. but the returns is on the far side. So, right. because, because we've made the chassis wider, what we've done is we've put a bigger return yeah. and rethrasher on the far side. So this side's looking after clean grain, the far side's looking after returns. Good stuff. Right on, right on rotor, is that acting as a drive shaft for something else nope. as well? No, nope, that's... Nope, that's just acting as a rotor. Right, that is a rotor. <laughs> that's just acting as a rotor. That's all, that's all we need out of that one. Cool, good stuff, right. Nearly there, nearly, nearly there. there. In nearly the whistle there, stop tour. Feeder house, bigger, wider? Bigger, stronger. wider, stronger, taller. It's, we, we had to do it. The, the headers that we're now putting on this machine being 50 They're going to be monstrous, aren't 60 they? 60 foot. Um, obviously takes some weight if you've got to clear it off the ground. Yeah. So it's a much, much bigger, heavy du heavier duty unit underneath. We've changed the way that the, um, the front face adjustment works. So the current one really is a modification of a, of a manual system. This one has been designed from the outset as a hydraulically operated front, yeah. front face. So we can tilt this from the front and it's got the strength to be able to move a five, six, seven, eight ton yeah, yeah. To, be able to, to be able to do it. Cool. And then finally, just looking upwards, cab. Is that cab, brand new or is that actually quite it's, similar to it's the? It's very similar to what, we, what we've got at the moment. Right. Uh, the architecture under the, under, the, under the panels is different. Yeah. So the electrical architecture goes with what we call um, the IntelliView 12 monitor, yeah. which needed a different wiring system in it. And with that IntelliView 12, we changed the GPS. So we're now using our Novatel system as opposed to the, the Trimble that's on the right. older cabs. There we go. Cool stuff. So, CR11. Yep. Will there be various different models in the CR11 family, or how is it going to look like in the future? This has got. We haven't designed this thing into a corner. No. So what I mean by <laughs> what, what I mean. It's what, got more, hasn't it? It's what, got more to give. <laughs> yes, it's got more to give. Right. Yes, it's got more to give. The the, the ability is there to, to give more. Whether we need to come downwards, we will see. Yeah. Um, but I don't. When you get up to something like a 990, yeah. there's existing capacity in that machine that it wouldn't need the benefit of, no, these, no. of, this, of this greater architecture here. So in terms of your current lineup, then most of that you'll keep, but maybe some of the top models you may trim off. Or we, 
Yes, to be to be determined. Yeah. To be to be determined. Right. At, at the moment, this machine sits well above the uh, where we currently are with the 10.9. Yeah. Cool. Cool stuff. Well, Nigel, as ever. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Can't wait to see it in the field because James, I'll, that, make sure, I'll, make sure, say, I'll make sure you get the invite. Top of that list. We'll have a look. See what's what. <laughs> there's, there's a, the, the, the top of that list. I'm going to say it's going to be quite a big list, isn't it? There's bloodshed yeah. at the top of that list at the minute. <laughs> and you'll have some going. paying customers at the top of that list yeah, as well. Yeah, then that, that, that we will as well. Yeah. That we will as well. Good cool stuff. Well. Ladies and gents, I hope you gained a little bit more from that. Between our walk round of it at Agritechnica and our walk round that you've just seen at Lammy here, hopefully you might be able to piece them together. We've got a few more, one or two more figures out of Nigel today. But like I say, Nigel, yeah, thank, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. Hopefully soon we will catch up with this machine in the field. That you will. Lovely stuff. That you will.